Dennis, I'm going to give you some snippets um, of the information that you need that's not in the video. So obviously at this point, your gearbox looks something like that. The push is out, that push is loose. Um, first thing you have to do on your box when it's fully cleaned is inside there you need to scrape away all the, the glue, the old glue. You need to chisel something like that. Okay, so basically just clean that up and make sure there's nothing that sticks up, no little burrs, no lumps, no bumps, because the, the bush has got a seal right in the base. It's got to be a good solid seal or a good solid bond. So there's been no old glue there. All right, so what I was saying to you about the, the bush, it's got to be a fairly tight fit. If this bush has come loose and somehow damaged this backing plate so that the bush can be in different positions, then that's going to be a big problem trying to line the gearbox up with the drive shaft. But for the moment, I'm going to assume that the hole there is still concentric and that, um, that when I push the bush in, yours will also go in as firmly. So, okay, once we're happy that it's going to be a tight fit, you place it on your vise. Okay, you should also give this bush a clean. Okay, so you're also going to give the bush a clean, just make sure that there's no glue on there. It's got lumps and bumps, just scrape it off like that. Same way, and then all around the edge this way. As well. And using acetone or lacquer thinners, I've got acetone. We're going to clean this up to remove any grease. Like so, make it nice and dry. That. Now, you take your glue, you said you have Gorilla, I'm assuming it'll work as well as this as this V300, which is a thick super glue, you can see it doesn't run away, it's sort of a gel. Place that in there like that, quite, an, quite a bit of it. Then place your bush on top, and then use a small cleaning hammer, and make sure it sits dead flush with the bottom. Absolutely square like that. Let's come through the back and check that it's come out evenly. Same height all round. Important. Right, now the bush is seated there. Your front bush, as I explained to you, you don't remove that because that is the only way you'll know exactly where that bush sat. So you can perhaps go on the inside, be very, very careful, but don't lose the ring, don't lose the outer bit. You can remove some of the the glue on the inside, the bonding glue on the inside, just to give the new glue a better chance of, of bonding. But don't lose the outer ring, very, very important. Don't disturb it at all. You take this bush, same story, give it a clean all round. This one is actually quite clean. Again, give it a wipe. Whatever you can, whatever excess you see there, any old glue or anything else. Okay, now in this instance, you put the glue, well, same story, you can put it there. that all the way home making sure that it absolutely bites that must basically be flush with the outside so that's how hard you've got to press it it's got to come right through you can possibly clean it slightly as well perfect okay you can wipe away the excess making sure it comes through there and it's almost level and now it's in exactly the same position that it was in. So if that bush has gone back exactly as it came out there was no wear on the back plate or the back tightener plate then when I put this gear in it should line up exactly. I'm missing a washer which I'll go and get. 
But in essence, when I put that in there like that, and I close the box. This is basically free running. Grab my washer. So I think you should be able to spin this freely as that. And you should be able to move it in and out very easily. So if the box held firmly closed, if you put the four screws in, nothing should change. It should be exactly like that. That's the kind of play you should have as well. Okay, so that's that's part one. Okay, so now with your box fully assembled, the motor back on, um, everything else that you need to know about this is in the other video. I'm not going to repeat it now. But in essence, when you've got it like that, being very careful not to touch the, the fan when it's spinning, hold it like so, connect it to your panel, and run the motor. And if you let go of the throttle, now initially when you first put the grease in, it's going to be tight, it's going to make noises, some grease is going to be, uh, it's going to uh, come out of that little hole at the back there, which is fine. But essentially you're going to run it and run it for a minute or two until eventually you get to the point where you can hear that it's running free. It must run free. So let go of the throttle, look how long it spins. That's what you want. If it's, if it's binding, if I put my finger there, it stops too quickly and it sounds like something's catching you basically got to check here it's got to be able to move in and out there's got to be a little bit of lateral movement a hair of lateral movement it must be able to move in and out freely and the motor must spin like this okay now we're going to move over to the boat okay let's start with where you're going to place the coupling so as you said uh, you've lost that measurement or you haven't got that measurement so in essence, your coupling is loose like that. So slide it on somewhere to about, so give it a gap of six or seven moles and lock one, one grub screw in place just like that. Right, then we work with the, with the dry shaft and the buffer. So importantly, when, when you get this buffer to fit, it, I know it's tight, but it shouldn't shave off one side, not the other side. So work it on slowly until you get it in, take it off again and work it like that until it's a nice tight fit on both sides without removing too much material on one or other side, otherwise it'll put it off center. Okay, so that goes in like that. Okay, with that spaced about six or seven moles, put your drive shaft back. I'm showing you on this boat because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see anything if I use the closed boat. So doing it this way you get the opportunity to see how it comes together. Okay, so we drop that in now. So it's obviously you know, in front of the, of the drive shaft and then you work it onto the shaft like that. You can, you can see why if the position of that shaft had changed, there's no way on this earth you're going to get that half of the coupling onto the drive shaft. So that first part was critical. In, in keeping the position of those bushes. All right, with it like that, with it connected that way, you can basically run the motor, and now you can see the, you can see the wobble. So obviously wrong side, take it off. Now that wobble is what would have caused this bush to break off the, off the front cover. Turn, rotate the dry shaft 180 degrees, put it back in again. Spin the motor. shaft um, all right so I put another one on I'll carry on from where I was so now when I put it down I slip it in 
So, we're at it again. And now it's running straight. Pretty well straight. Okay, and that's what we want. We don't want any vibration on the motor. That's perfect. Right, now you can't run, you can't run the motor for a long time when the shaft is in the drive shaft housing because the seal at the end gets hot and if it gets too hot it will melt and that will allow the boat to leak. So when you're running the motor up, when you've got the grease and you don't do it when it's in the boat, you do it outside the boat, when it's finally fitted in the boat, um, then you can just do a couple of those little things. Okay, now we're going to bolt everything up and I'm going to explain to you how to adjust this coupling um, since you've lost the measurement. Okay, so importantly, when you put these screws back, don't tighten any of them until you've got them all fully in place. Okay, so everything is in seat correctly, and then you tighten almost full at the back, but not quite full to the end and turn it back. To the end and turn it back, and then you tighten these. fully now obviously it's very very much easier to work on this whole arrangement as you will well know getting to those screws is quite difficult when the when the deck is on but that's just the way it is um, that's how it's got to be that's where it's bolted down check it again still sounds good it's not binding right now we come to now we come to the gap that, that you need to have um, between the two arms of the coupling. Right? <coughs> yeah. All right, so what's needed now is you're going to, at this point you would only have put in a single grub screw, not, not both of them, and just one and you wouldn't have locked tightened it. You basically just loosen it now, making sure you can see the flat spot through the hole, or at least when you had it on the outside, that you arranged the hole so that they lay over the flat spot on the shaft you then do is you place a blade, open the coupling, you open the coupling like so, and you push a blade in, you actually, you just want the tip of it in the front there, and then you take a, screw, a broad blade screwdriver, or whatever tool you're going to be able to get in, in there, you have to basically, you have to open the coupling like that so against the housing you use something to wedge it open and then with the blade in position like that you lock that first grub screw just like that okay when you pull it out that's it that's the gap you should have thick as a blade right, and then you obviously would now fit the the other grub screws in so with that one holding the coupling where you want it you now just drop your super, your, not your super, your, your lock tight in the hole and put the next grub screw in. Okay, so now put a drop of lock tight. So obviously, a bit of lock tight now on the grub screw, and it's the 242 version that we use because you want to be able to get this out sometime. You may want to get it out sometime in the future. If you put the stronger ones on, then you actually have to heat it up and you, you can't get the heat to that point. So 242 is the correct solution. Okay, now you lock that one into place. When you're happy with that, you come back to the first one, remove it, and fit the next one. There's no other way. Um, if you'd used the vernier and saved the measurement, then you might have been able to do it outside of the boat. And I know you're going to work hard to get this done with the boat closed but that is just the way it is. There's no other way to do it. Okay, so those are both locked in place, nice and tight. Give it a wipe and give it a run. And once again, now, shaft should be able to move just like that and everything should be able to move without too much pressure everything should be able to move just like that <coughs> the idea is that when you tighten up the, the, the prop at the back it will pull in fact there's there's more gap than i need there there's more gap than i require double check 
here more than I want. So, no harm done. I can loosen this. It would work that way, but if you want it exactly like, exactly right, if you can. And really, I only put the tip in. So what will actually happen is, you can see the gap, there is a gap, and when you tighten the prop on, you're going to pull it away, you're going to disengage the coupling slightly, and you're going to lock the prop in that position with just a hair of movement, so half of what, of what play there is will exist on the thrust washers in front of the, of the prop. But that is what it should sound like, that is how it should run, and you should be able to move the shaft in and out. Um, and that's basically it. I know you're going to suffer because you have to work from underneath of the tray. But follow those steps as best you can and um, you should be successful.